Think you know your boxing? Save it for Ladbrokes.com. Proud sponsors of Irish boxing coverage on RTE. in his 14 pro fights, Andy Lee returns to Limerick to prove his world-class credentials in front of his home crowd. Oh yes, the middleweight clash between Lee and the gutsy Argentinian Alejandro Faliga tops the bill tonight at the University Sports Arena here in Limerick. Before the main event, we'll also be bringing you live coverage of Derry's Paul McCluskey as he squares up to the Mexican danger man, Manuel Garnica. Yes, and you're very welcome to the University Sports Arena here in Limerick. We have a fantastic night ahead. Andy Lee will be in the ring in uh, the not-too-distant future. I'm joined, as always, by Mick Dowling and by Jim Rock. Gentlemen, good evening to you both. And Mick, uh, an historic night, first-ever professional promotion to be staged in Limerick. Yeah, I suppose for Andy Lee it would be fair to say that any professional boxer, young professional boxer in particular, they would just wish to box in front of their own home crowd, and Andy Lee gets that opportunity here tonight. The arena here is fantastic, seems to be a great atmosphere outside and the uh, people of Limerick have responded by coming out here in their droves to support him. Absolutely, it's a sellout of uh, nearly 3,000 people here in the arena. Uh, Jim, one of the comments that uh, Lee's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, was making in one of the newspapers today, he was saying that Andy Lee is on course for a crack at a world title in nine months' time. Uh, would you go along with that? I wouldn't go along with that, no. Obviously, Emmanuel Stewart is a very, very um, experienced trainer, but you know Lee is only 23 years of age, and I think in nine months' time, I think it would be too early for him to have um, a crack at the at the world titles, let's say WBA or WBC. But certainly, maybe 18 months down down the road, if he keeps on winning. Mm. Mick, there's pressure on Andy as well tonight, isn't there? In front of his home crowd, this is a dream for him to fight as a professional in his hometown, and that's what's happening this evening. Well, I suppose there's always pressure on him now because, you know, he's 14 uh, fights unbeaten. So every time he steps into that ring, he has got to win. And, you know, the unpredictability of boxing, you never know what's going to happen. And, of course, we saw that if we go back again to the Bernard Dunn contest, the Bernard Dunn fight at the point. So you never know what's going to happen. But certainly, yes, for Andy, uh, you know, he's going to have to do it tonight here. But he's got so much skill. He's got so much class. He's got the power. He's got the know-how. Uh, I think... Um, it's going to be another win for him, but I sincerely hope, Dara, that it's going to be a good test for him. It may go five rounds, may go six rounds, but again, it'll give us and it'll give the people of uh, Limerick and Ireland, indeed, an opportunity to see the class that this young fighter is. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to seeing him in action. That's coming up probably in about an hour's time. But first on our live bill, uh, Paul McCluskey is fighting. He's up against a Mexican opponent, Manuel Garnica. There is Garnica in the changing rooms just a few minutes ago. Paul McCluskey, as you can see, in relaxed form. He's live after the break. Yeah, welcome back to the University of Limerick. Time for our first live boxing of the evening. The unbeaten dairyman, Paul McCluskey, in against a Mexican opponent, Manuel Garnica. The boys are in the ring, ready to go, and our two boys at the side of the ring are Dave Boy McCauley and Jimmy McGee. Yes, and we're ready to go as well, Dara. Paul McCluskey, what a career he's had as a professional. He's now 14-0, and 0, as they say, and seven wins on the trot uh, last year. So this is a big one for him, not just to win this evening, Dave Boy, but I reckon if he wins and puts up an outstanding performance, he'll headline a future show in the near future for Brian Peters. Yes, this is his hardest test to date. This guy has been with a few former world champions, and uh, he's a really good pedigree. It's a really good test for, for Paul McCluskey. If he gets through this OK, he's on, he's on the big ladder. Right, Paul, we want to see your southpaw style, we want to see panache, and we want to see a win. Here's Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the ancient city of Limerick, uh, we welcome viewers joining us live and exclusive on RTE Sports from the University Arena. 
Tonight our boxing sponsored by Labrook.com uh, Fight Night and promoted by Brian Peters Promotions. We begin our coverage this evening with an international light welterweight contest scheduled for 10 three-minute rounds. Between introducing firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, trim with white. He comes from Mexico and weighed in at 10 stone, two pound and six ounces. He brings with him a 29 fight professional record, 21 wins, 11 O's wins coming by way of knockout with eight losses. Please welcome from Mexico, Manuel Garnica. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, across the ring in the red corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed with white. He comes from Dungiven in County Derry, weighed in at 10 stone, uh, two pound and six ounces. He's unbeaten as a professional. 14 wins coming from 14 contests. Seven wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to the ring tonight as the current IBF Intercontinental Light Worldweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dungiven's Paul McCluskey! Our officials this evening, ladies and gentlemen, are appointed by the Boxing Union of Ireland under the supervisor Francis McCulloch. Our timekeeper for this contest, Mr. Alex McKenzie, the referee, Mr. David Irvin, who will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, man, you're all ready. I've talked to the dressings, okay? I'm just going to say two more things, okay? Defend yourselves at all time, and your better man will be command. Okay, Paul? Emmanuel? Touch the lovers. God bless. David Irving, the referee for this one. Brian Peters, you see, just on the ring apron there, the promoter. And from the Tusky, there are big stakes here. A good performance, one of his classy performances, and he's on his way to being a headliner. He's not too far off it tonight in Limerick. From Dungiven, interestingly enough, they win weigh in precisely the same. Ten stone, two pounds, and six pounds. Light water with the division, and McCluskey is the southpaw. In other words, the man who leads with his right. Uh, and what a right lead it is to that South Paul Paul McCluskey. He presents so little target area for an opponent. Side on body, and very seldom does he present a full torso for an opponent to hit. Already you can see that jab snapping out from Garnica. But McCluskey just moves his head. He's one of the best in Europe at just barely moving his head and escaping the issues. Although one did get through there, and maybe that's a good thing in a way for McCluskey. Look at that, the little move of the head. He loves the defensive side of boxing. He must have read all the books about the art of the noble art of self defense, which he loves it. And then when he gets his own jab going, as there, he is a formidable foe. There's one thing he's going to have to watch. I mean, this fella is a world-class fighter. And world-class fighters can all come to terms with South Paw stances because you have to be able to do that in order to be a world-class fighter. And this guy has been in with former world champions and beaten former world champions. So this fella is very, very, very good. So McCluskey's South Paw stance is a problem for a lot of fighters, but for fighters who, who are world-class and who are good, South Paws don't pose as big a threat as what they normally do to lesser fighters. So therefore, he's going to have to be in top form here tonight because this guy is very dangerous. Dave Bob McCord will refer to being in with some uh, ex-world champions. Uh, he's beaten uh, Carlos Moussa and he's beaten Gabriel Ruiz. So there are two, but he himself is a very slick performer. No doubt about that. And this is one of the biggest fights that McCluskey would have had as a professional. It's only his 15th pro fight, whereas his opponent here is this evening boxing in his 30th professional fight. And that's one huge difference. Twice as many fights as uh, McCluskey. So add all the, all the possibilities up together and you realize that this is stepping up for McCluskey. Although he has proved in the past he beat Toncho Toncho, outscored him, outboxed him in Belfast. That was a superb win for McCluskey. And it's good to see him having to take on tough guys. The Mexicans are all tough by nature. Any of them who ever get in the ring from flyweight right up to the highest weights, way up to Garcia to remember him. Really some tough ones. And right now they're bossing it around the bantamweight and feather in junior light. 
Well, that's some lovely, typical McCluskey right hand lead. And a good left to follow it. And I rather think that uh, a little bit of acting there from Gardisha. I think the ropes may have fought, stopped him from falling over there. He's just slightly off balance as McCluskey caught him with that left hand. That goes the right jab again from Paul McCluskey. Looking as always very good, McCluskey. Beautiful boxer, really stylish, magnificent. Little bit of showboating to which he's uh, thrown at times, but he's very good. He's got quick legs, quick hands, and that shot him at times there, Dave Boy, at his very best. Yes, and he's going to have to be in his tip top form here. Now, this guy oozes class. You can see that this guy is a world class winner, but McCluskey did very well. Moved back out of the way of danger there. I think McCluskey's one of these guys. The better the opponent he fights, the better he fights. It was, it was a good opening first round. Both fighters felt each other out. McCluskey had the slight upper hand there, and I give that round to McCluskey, but he's going to have to be in tip-top condition and in tip-top form, because this man, as I, as I have said already, this man is very dangerous. Yes, Dave Boy McCauley, seventh fight in a row in Ireland, Letterkenny, Cork, Dublin, two at the stadium, one at the point, Kings Hall in Belfast, and now in Limerick, made his pro debut in the Kings Hall in Belfast, one of the theatres of pro boxing three years ago when he beat uh, David Kyo. But that was a good first round and a wake-up call for both of them. They both know they're in a really tough one here, but Ganicha has fought all over the place and he's not afraid to travel. Dave Boy jabs out that right hand again. And he's so good defensively uh, at cross gates. Whatever about his accepted punching with his right hand, and he also carries a pretty nifty left hook to the body when he decides to throw it. He's quite sparing with it, as though he were saving them up. And attending really on his jab. Look at the eyes of McCluskey staring at his opponent down, waiting for every little move. And when there is a move, that head of McCluskey just moves the shade, just a fair minimum, but enough to avoid the heavy artillery, even if at times he does take one. Looks though he's winding up for a left hand, but Garnica, who has the experience, he's from Guadalajara in Mexico. And it was in that city of Guadalajara that Pat Jennings, the Red Pat, made his 119th record performance for Northern Ireland, the World Cup in 1986. However, it shows Garnica's not too worried about that now. In the center of the ring, McCluskey, it's a bit of a fight. Watch the heads, watch the rabbit punching, which is the punch in the back of the neck. The kidney punching is on the back, obviously on the kidneys. But McCluskey's not in for an easy spurt here in this one, that's for sure. He's a man who can dictate a fight at the end of that job of his. Watch your head, Michael. If that's the way it is, but right now, 33-year-old Garnica, and he gets McCluskey. Real good, hard fighter who's been around so much. He was robbed, in fact, in the fight against Juan Lasciano in his native Buenos Aires. When just about everybody ringside, anybody who saw the video since would have said he won that, but uh, he didn't get the decision. But he's a real, real good fighter. And he's doing everything right, Jimmy. They, uh, where a lot of fighters fall by the wayside, they forget to keep their left foot outside the southpaw's right foot. And this is what Garnick is doing here. His left foot nearly all the time is outside Paul McCluskey's left foot, which means Garnick is on balance and he can deliver his punches very, very uh, quickly and very efficiently. But McCluskey's having great success with that left hand and that, and, and that right hook. He's a very, very, very elusive fighter. McCluskey, he's very hard to kneel with a good, clean, uh, solid shot. And Garnick is going to find this a bit of a problem tonight. He sure is. McCluskey, very good. Really lovely, lovely boxer. He was always the same, too, as an amateur. He's a man who deserved to go to the Olympics and perhaps get a medal there. He's, he's kept up this form, and, of course, he's improved as a professional. At the end of that, there's hardly a mark of McCluskey. He's a, and all, if you could see him from where uh, Garnica looks at him, see, all you're seeing is if, uh, of a line, a geometric line of a shoulder, a right shoulder presenting itself. That's what McCluskey is. Dave Boy is the most difficult man 
because there's no target. Yeah, all southpaws are very awkward, but uh, McCluskey is very, very... The way he stands, he stands with his yeah, shoulder facing back. you. Yeah. Good work yeah, here from, from uh, Garnica. He had some success, but the punches weren't devastating punches. But McCluskey moves with the punches. One of these fighters who's blessed with this ability to move along with a punch. And what that does, it takes a sting right out of the punch, so it doesn't do the same damage. His reflexes are very, very, very good. Keep your hands up. John Green said to the name and McGee as well in the corner. Keep your hands up. John Green sent him. He's a crafty boy in his right. But it's the Trusky style he likes. It's always the way he's boxed, you know. Sometimes he lets the hands pull down. It depends on his own quickness of mind to find the escape route. Round three. This is round three. It's been a good fight so far. Nice clash of styles, and that's always interesting. Can the southpaw, with those expert leads, can he dictate the fight? Can he get the points that matter? One thing for sure, Garnick, he's finding it very, very hard to find him and hit him. To find the range against McCluskey, who in turn Seems to be finding the range on his Mexican opponent just a little bit better. But Garnick is a slick boxer. He got a left hand into the right eye there of Matuski. You saw that one and he blinked for a moment. I'll tell you this, Jimmy, this guy Garnick just oozes class, but you have to give McCluskey a lot of credit to because he's handling this guy. Not easily, but uh, he's, uh, he, you would think, looking at the two fighters, that McCluskey had the same experience and the same abilities as this guy, but in my opinion, I think McCluskey's got more ab ab ability, and you can see it here also, but this man, Garnica, is oozing the class, and McCluskey's going to have to be on tip-top form here, and he's going to have to be very, very, very careful, as he is being, because he's controlling the fight to a certain extent right now, you know, he's on front, and he's doing everything right. He doesn't want to get too involved in a brawl here. He wants to do what he's doing now. Keep this man at long range. Keep boxing and keep pumping those left hands and right hands out because he's having great success doing that. Sure is. Uh, very good point there made by Dave by McCauley. You think that it was Matuski had the ball experience and he's only had the experience as a professional that Garniki has. His 30 fights against 15. So you don't need to be a mathematician to work that out, but uh, there's no substitute for these southpaw skills. And left hand's coming in as well. He's been successful with that left hand, Matuski. Probably doesn't throw it as often as some people would like him to, but when he does, it usually counts, and it's counted there too. Good performance by Paul McCluskey by any record. This is only the third round, though, so a lot can happen, especially against a durable Mexican performer. But you see the target that Garnick is presenting to McCluskey as against the only sliver no, no, of body that no, McCluskey is no, no, presenting no, no, to him. No, no, no. That goes that jab again, snapping out. It's sharp, it's shrewd, and so is the man behind it. Last half minute of the third round. And the right hand South lead is dictating the fight. And escapology there from the Trusky comes after us now. Through five shots. Only two of them got through, but he threw five. And there was no reply from Garnick. He was very wild with the left hand. And out goes the tap tap of the jab of Matuski into the face of Garnica and then Matuski yeah, ducks yeah, just down a little bit not that on the not dangerous and the end of a round that showed Matuski at his boxing best day by McCauley. There's no doubt about it McCluskey's doing everything here that's being asked of him. He's one of these guys he moves as I said earlier on he takes a sting out of the punch uh, he, he's one of the, these few people Muhammad Ali was one of the people who could do this and do it with great success. When they move, they move with the punch, and it just kills the punch stone dead. It takes a tar right out of it, and this is what McCluskey can, can do, and can do very, very, very well. But tonight, he's fighting extremely well. He's fighting a world-class fighter, and at this moment on time, he's ahead, and he looks to me like the classier and the more experienced man at this moment in time. For me, anyway, I thought he's won the first three rounds. And look at him. Golden State seconds. Not a mark on him. No distress. Well within himself. Knows what he's about. Seconds out. And is in Round control. Four. Ten rounds a long time as it's only the fourth. The 
It's like world-class fighters to me are dangerous right up to the final bell. When it goes, then you know you're safe. But it's see until the final bell goes, you can be in big, big, big danger at, at any point during the course of the fight. That's why this man's a world-class fighter. Talking about world class over in McCluskey's corner is Evan McGee himself has been at the upper class. Now that was low, and McCluskey was right to point it out to referee David Irving. He was right on the waistband. But the Mexicans are hard, tough fighters. They're able to take it themselves. They don't look for favours in the ring. And that goes for any of them. The Vasquez's and the Marquez's and the Barreras and the whole lot of them right up along now and before and no doubt in the future too but that's a snappy lead there from McC from McCluskey very snappy watch when it goes out it comes in like a bee stings like a bee look at that again out twice right into the face then the left hand no. across over and then right. come in tight so if you're counting them up there count them up for yourself and find out that right hand of McCluskey's just start from now and see what happens he escapes the, the attempt from uh, Garnica, then scores with his own right hand, then jabs his right hand out again, then again, and still there's no reply there from Garnica. That's how it is. But Trusky's in charge. He's doing, every, he's doing everything right to me. He's, he's keeping Garnica at long range. You know, he's jabbing, he's boxing. You know, he's not getting too involved in a brawl. When he gets involved in the inside, he grabs and he ties Garnick up, you know, he, he's making things very difficult for him. In fact, he's frustrating him so much, and you can see sometimes in the, by the expression on Garnick's face that, that, that he is frustrated, and, and this is the, the proper thing for McCluskey to do. You have to knock these guys right out of their stride. Don't let them dictate any part of the fight at all, because the more you let them dictate, the more confident they grow and the better they become. Not only about that, when he fought Toncho Toncho in Belfast, that was a TKO. That he won that one with a terrific performance by uh, McCluskey on that night. And Tonchev, a renowned fighter, both as a professional and as an amateur. And this fellow he's in against now is renowned also as a professional, Garniki, but he just can't find the range. But McCluskey certainly can. And here in round four, all McCluskey has to do is be careful. He has the fitness. He has the wherewithal and he has the smarts. There's no doubt about that. Paul McCluskey is good and getting better every time we see him. In fact, Dave Boyd is of the opinion and has expressed it on this program that the tougher the opposition, the better he becomes. He just rises to the occasion and for every punch he's taken here, he's thrown three and scored a large percentage of them. It's another good run for Paul McCluskey. And after four really good runs, the man from Dungiven, County Derry, can sit on his throne for the moment and realise that he's in front. I reckon he's he's uh, ahead by a few. I think he's won the four, four, first four rounds. Jim Rock. Yes, I agree with you totally, Jimmy. Um, Paul McCluskey has won every single round. I think as the fight is going on, he's he's um, he, he's sussing out his opponent, and he knows exactly what he has to do. He's hitting them with some great shots, and um, I think he's frustrating. Um, he's frustrating Ganika, and Ganika he's he, he's gone wild with his punches now, and um, he's he's missing with a lot of shots, and McCluskey's just picking them off. Paul McCluskey on the verge of being a headliner and he won't have to go longer than another couple of months and Brian Peters I should imagine will be cajoled into he's probably already made up his mind to make Paul McCluskey a headliner on one of his future shows not bad going after three years as a pro the fifth round the halfway mark. Well, at the end of this, it'll be the halfway mark. And Garnica, we've seen a lot from him, a lot of professionalism from him, a lot of intent from him, but he hasn't been able to tag Matluski. Certainly hasn't been able to tag him with a big one. That was a nice, solid wee right hook. Caught Garnica right on the temple. Sort of started him very, 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 very slight. But I could see a slight stagger. I could tell by his eyes that punch had a bit of effect there. A nice, solid wee left hook right to the a right hook right to the temple. Yes, yeah, a good night for Dungiven and for Derry. As McCluskey grows in stature. Remember when he fought Orlando Bustas in the stadium in Dublin and he knocked him out in the fourth round with the sweetest body shot you'd see. So he's well capable of something like that. 
But if it has to go long range and it has to go like this at boxing, he can give you an exhibition. He's wonderful to watch, I think. And uh, those southpaw skills are terrific. They're the sort of thing that young lads who have aspirations to be a boxer, shadow box with themselves out in the barn or out on the field, and they pretend they're like this elusive, like Willie Pep of the past, or any of those sort of fighters. But Matuski is like that. The slightest movement of the head to avoid. Just watch the head. He can leave his head oh, in there. Nice and and sword right hook again. He's got cat-like reflexes, you know, he's able to just pull back in the nick of time. You know, there's very few fighters that possess that quality in, 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 in boxing life, and you could count them in one hand down through the years that, have, that do possess that quality. And Paul McCluskey is definitely one of them, but you keep saying, because sometimes he's, they, they just miss by a whisker. You keep saying, if he keeps at this, there's a real good chance that somebody will tag him, but not yet has that happened, and that just shows you how confident he is and how good he is at doing that. His class is superb, there's no doubt about that, and he's given quite an exhibition here. There's no doubt it's a very, very strong top of the undercard for Paul McCluskey. Still, Jimmy, you have to give Carnegie, or Carnegie here credit. He's still there, he's still trying, and he's still very dangerous. So McCluskey still has to keep on his toes, keep thinking and not to get too involved in, in a brawl, because this guy can bang a bit, and he's still pretty dangerous. Yeah, it's about concentration as well as performance, but there's no doubt about it, McCluskey's giving value for money this evening, but we're only halfway through this one. Interesting, that they, look at this, McCluskey. Now, a lot of people would say that showboarding, but he did that as an amateur as well. I don't think he means it as that, it's just the way he boxes, he reads situations so well, he's almost as though he's seen the fight before and knows when the punches are coming. He's an absolute expert at the southpaw style and has put up a really class performance. Look at his face, not a mark, not, I mean, a mark. not a mark, maybe the towel in the corner will mark him. Look at the way he moves, as I said, he's, he's got cat-like reflexes, but you have to be very careful. When you're fighting with world-class fighters, these guys can adapt to those cat-like reflexes. So you have to be careful the whole way through. This man, in my opinion, is still dangerous yet and will be for a few, a few rounds yet. But that's really good stuff from McCluskey. Every punch he throws here, more or less, lands on target. And the ones that miss well, you can count them in the one hand also. But he's a good, clean, young fighter and he's a really good prospect. That's for sure. 10 seconds on the seconds. We'll have to get out of the corners. Seconds out. Round six. Paul McCluskey still very much the sunny side of 30. And uh, Manuel Garnicho will never see 30 again except on the bus. Tusky amazingly can just keep this going, which means he has to concentrate 100%. Jabbing is so expert, so very, very good, but it's not just that. I love his defensive work, the fact that he can move that body, he can arc his stomach and move it out of the way marginally in his head too. And uh, it's a really master class by Paul McCluskey. And up against a really good opponent. Look at that right hand jab into the face again of Garnica. And uh, the Mexican can't find distance. He's out of distance with three left hands and a right hand. Whereas McCluskey is spot on with his jab. The whole, the whole. Manica has won 21 fights, 11 of them by KO, so clearly he knows how to finish fights early. And that's another warning from McCluskey, but of course the Dungiven Derryman will go into the ring knowing all this, he'll know all that beforehand. And probably will have watched tapes as well, videos, there was a DVD just only now, but whatever. YouTube or whatever, he'll know. And there's both hands going, just mixing it about a bit, the right lead, the left cross, hook, a left hook to the body as well. Little reminders that he has the full range of skills, Petluski. The 
think to hear us talking that there was only one fighter in great far from it. But you have to admit, if you're watching it, that McCluskey is the master against a Mexican who, with his experience and his age and his number of fights and his KO record, you might expect to be the master. But alas, it's not so. I can tell you this, Jimmy, when you're fighting the guys from, from South America, you know that you're in for a real hard time and a real hard fight. There's there's not one yet. Do you ever see Never. a bad Mexican? Never. Never. They've got guts, they've got heart, they've got ability, they can punch, they can take a punch, and they can give you as much as what you give them, plus a little bit more. And so every one of them seem to fight wars. Oh, yes. that's, that's just the way they are. They're tough, tough people. And they never lie down, never. Coming towards the end, a couple of seconds left in this sixth round, and we're past the halfway mark, and there's not a sign of a let-up from the Tusky, and he hasn't been caught with anything that's remotely like a punch that's going to slow him up. Terrific round again by Paul McCluskey against, and we bears repeating, against a very, very good opponent. It's been the same thing the whole way through the fight. McCluskey has him on the end of this jab. He has him on the run. And McCluskey still, at this moment in time, still has the cat-like reflexes. But he still has to, I have to emphasize this so much, he's going to have to be very careful because this guy is still dangerous. This guy can bang a bit. He's not a devastating puncher, but he's what you call in the game a hurtful puncher. And if he hits you with three or four good shots, it could be a good night. So you have to be very careful. I wonder, can we get that microphone in the corner? Yes, John Green. Yeah. Keep on, keep on. Keep on. Gotta stay on the road. Keep on working. I would say they're saying, Jimmy, look, do what you're doing. Keep this man on the end of your jab. Don't get too involved in the brawl. Jab and move, jab and move. Make life as often for him as what you possibly can. And frustrate the hell out of him. And that is no doubt what he's doing. This is the seventh round. Scheduled for ten. Only four to go, that goes the distance. McCluskey has given us a nice mix of the right lead, the jab, mostly into the face, some very good left hooks to the body. And look at that, the movement that they had again, it's uncanny almost. It really is. Very few fighters have been able to do that on a consistent level. Occasionally guys can do it on a one-off for a couple of rounds of flash, but we're now in the seventh, and McCluskey is piling up the points all the time, and we're still waiting for that big crunching blow from the next team. Try the right hand of the body there. Look at that again, the head moving. He's like a puppet on a string, McCluskey, and whoever's the puppeteer is certainly working that head splendidly. Watch your head, watch your head, my that's the, one of the first punches that McCluskey has been wild with in the whole fight. Mexican leaning on, head on his chest there a bit, referee has to break the... That sort of tactics annoys McCluskey. He wants it all to be clean and classy. And uh, the gum shield is on the floor. And guess whose gum shield it is? Quick, quick. Yeah, the Mexicans, so you can yeah. be honest and actually believe it came out by accident. Or you can be... Yep. Okay. Suspicious like me and say it didn't. Anyway, it's washed up now and McCluskey can resume. Halfway through the seventh. He has him where he wants him, has to take a right to the solar plexus, McCluskey. Right hand flush on the mouth of the Mexican. Still Garnica, a formidable foe. He's been around the rings, he's been in some heavy fights against some good boxers. That was a right that peeled back the moustache above his upper lip. And again, the right hand from McCluskey scored three times. The left hand scored in the face. Good stuff in the crowd and Limerick enjoying McCluskey. The try now encourage him to go for a, a premature end, but let him not be goaded into that and maybe walk into a haymaker. But no doubt about it, he's the top man at the moment, Paul McCluskey. And if this is the sort of stuff he can produce, you can well see why he's going to be a headliner in the very, very near future. Just been told there about uh, punching. Or back to, I think the lace has come loose, the tie up has come loose on the right glove of Paul Matuski. And the left one as well. Scissors do come in 
handy at times. And away we go again. Paul can resume what he was doing, which is peppering the face of Garnica with that right hand. I can tell you, Jimmy, Garnica's looking very, very, very weary right now. He's looking to me like he's a man that's ready to collapse because there's that much pressure being piled on here by our cousin. And he's been caught so often, it's nearly time for uh, Karnicki to, to call it a day because he, he's under a lot of pressure and he's finding it very, very, very difficult to land a good solid shot on McCluskey. Now, a lot of pressure here, and I would say McCluskey could swing this with a stoppage if he keeps piling the pressure on. Well, Toncho Choncha thought he might for? do it in Belfast against McCluskey, but the don't give a man give us an exhibition, and he's giving us another exhibition tonight. This is McCluskey at his classy best, and it looks like Garnica is almost despondent in the corner. He's not taking a stool, he's standing up, whether that's macho or for real, I don't know. Well, it's the but same taking a lot. Yep, it's the same thing the whole way through this fight. McCluskey's done the right thing, He's kept Carnegie at the end of that jab and banged in the right hands and the right or the left hands and the right hooks. But Carnegie, he was standing up, but I think that's all bravado because to me, he looked like a very tired man at the end of that round. And I feel that the McCluskey ties the pressure on like this, like what he's doing now, in this coming round, there's a real good chance he may stop Carnegie. Or Carnegie, sorry. Well, he was trying to dismiss the stool, but believe me, he didn't dismiss it afterwards. He realises now that every rest he can take is vital. And they're now in the corner that he's going to need something very, very special. There are three rounds scheduled to remain, eight, nine and ten. And it's almost as though the bell never went at all, but Trusky's back for he finished in the last round. That is, out goes the right jab, one time, two times. Then Carnegie misses with a couple of left hands. Now it's McCluskey's turn. Out it goes again. Makes his man miss. Has to take it. But even with the ones that connect to McCluskey, he's just moving his face almost at the moment of impact so that it's not causing any trouble to him at all. And it looks as though it's, uh, he's in, on a gym session at the moment, to be honest with you. Having said that, of course, the heavy bag or the speed ball won't hit you back in the gym, but Garniki can hit it back. And wants to, definitely. But Matuski powders him with a right, stiffs him with a left, moves away from anything that Garniki is attempting to throw at him. This is Matuski really giving another of his master glasses. He's, and I think now, Dave, boy, he's sitting down more on his punches than he used to as well. Yes, he's throwing punches now with a wee bit more authority. There's a wee bit more weight behind the punches now. Whereas before, just, you know, the snap of the arm, you know, which means it's very hard to knock guys out. You, know, you have to get a wee bit of weight. Still, he still can improve on his punching power by, by uh, a, a wee bit more lateral movement because, he, in my opinion, he, he still can't. There's room for improvement. But he has improved on what he was doing. There's no doubt about that. But I still feel he can punch a bit harder if he delivers the punch from the waist up and moves a lot more laterally with the punches as he throws them. And sometimes still, Jimmy, it's still the weight of the arm. Through a left into the belly there of uh, Garnica. I'm glad he didn't have a big feed round tea time. Or the ring would have to be cleaned up. It's a very good left hand there from McCluskey. Look at how loose he is. Gets back and gets back into the pivotal position in the ring so that he can resume. Centre of the thing. If imagine it's a clock and he's just the centre spiral of the clock and so he can move his man around wherever he wants him. And that's what he's doing. That left again goes out to the body of Garnica. And all the time I keep waiting, I don't know about you, I keep waiting for Garnica to throw a big one and put McCluskey in trouble. But so far, I'm waiting in vain. I think all the steam's taken out of uh, Carnegie's, uh, Carnegie's uh, 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 power, uh, Jimmy. I don't think he has a punch now, or the power now, to do as much damage as what he had in the early part of the fight, because I think there's a, the tank's getting be beginning to run dry here, and uh, the zip's been taken out of his punch by the sheer pressure of McCluskey. Just never being off on him from, from the start of the round to the finish of the round, and he's not leaving the, leaving the man alone. And this is what he has to do. There's the gum sheet out again, and that means and he wasn't being punched there. I think he spat that out. Gum sheet's out again, and you know something? It didn't jump out of its own accord. 
No doubt, that's another sign that Madlowski is the man. Now, we want to get up close to this base here and have a look at it. We will after we just have a little replay of some of the moments of the last round. Good stuff again from McCluskey. It's been the same the whole way through. Right jabs, left punches. You know, he's having great success to the body and to the head. Carnegie is having some success, but not a big lot. Uh, and in my opinion, the whole way through this fight, uh, McCluskey's had the way by far the upper hand. And as I can go over my scorecard here, I have him winning every round. Now, some of the rounds he has won, he's only just slightly won, but he's won, near, he's won all the rounds of my card so far. Now, if this man, apart from the grease, if this man walked into your house tonight and said, what we went tonight, and he told you he was fighting, you wouldn't believe him, would you? Not a sign. It's just Second amazing. Down. He has two rounds to go, and he is on his way to victory. Rumour going around, but uh, still a rumour, that's all it is, until it's confirmation that there will be a pro box show in Letterkenny, County Donegal, Ryan Peters' promotion, and that will be coming up in a couple of months, and if it is, expect to see Paul McCluskey top of the bill. Probably has done enough in this one now, but not to get careless. The head movement is, I thrills me. I must say, I love somebody who can box like that. Not make a fool of his opponent, but make his opponent look almost desperate. To hit him, he knows the target is there. And he throws one, and you're here talking about a man who's been in tonight's his 30th professional fight and has won 21 of them. What he has done, Jim, he's made a world-class fighter look pretty ordinary. That's what he's done tonight in my book. This man came into the ring tonight. He's beaten former world champions, you know, he's been in with the, he's been in with the best. And this young man, Paul McCluskey, has made him look pretty ordinary, in my opinion. But didn't he do that against Tonchev as well? He made him look Tonchev had to quit. I doubt if you'd see the Mexican quit. They don't quit, it's not their style. But he's miles behind, I should think. Had to hear to stop it right now, to be 90 points to 81 in favour of McCluskey. A lot of runs ago since we talked to Jim Rock, and at that time Jim was in agreement with us that he'd won every round up to then, and nothing's changed since then. I, 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 yes, might, I, I might be being biased here, but I have McCluskey every round right up to... Apart from this round, I have every round of run. As I said earlier on, some of the rounds he just marginally won, but he did enough to win those rounds. And other rounds he's won by a week. So I, in my card, it's all tens, and Garnica's uh, scoreline is all nines. And I, and I don't think that's being biased at all. No, no, just, just looking at the fight that's here in front of us, and we're at ringside, and we're just seeing it, just barely count. Let's count them yourself here now, and we're in the penultimate round when McCluskey, look at that, there's two jabs, there's another, there's a left hand, nothing from Garnicky, that's the left hand, that's the right hand. I mean, you don't have to be a mathematician to work it out. And Garnicky must be getting frustrated. There's nowhere to go, there's no out here at all, unless he finds one moment to buy an inspiration or any other kind of inspiration. But McCluskey, I'm, al I'm almost afraid to say it, but he's toying with them now. Shouldn't use that expression when you're talking about a fighter who's been in the world champions, but quite frankly, with a round to go, Santa Claus has already come to McCluskey. We talk about toying with him. He's a really top class fighter, Dave, and this is only his 15th pro fight. There's no doubt about it. He's a He's, a, he's one for the future, there's no doubt about it. He's got a lot of class, he's got a lot of skill. He's got a few wee rough edges, but uh, that's only been <laughs> maybe over, over, over 10 degree. But uh, he's one of the best clubs. You have, you have John Durry, you have Andy Lee, and you have uh, Paul McCluskey, who are three of the best prospects you'll probably get in Europe. Without a doubt, these three guys are potential world champions. There's no doubt about it in my mind. There's another young guy called uh, Matthew Magdalene. He's also another very good prospect. You know, so there's loads of them. Not forgetting Bernard Dunn, who's on, on, on the outskirts, about to come back in again. 
So we've never been as well off, but round the, this division, this McCluskey, I think there's a European title in him for sure, and maybe there's a world title as well. We're in the last round, and Paul McCluskey, he has come from the other side of the country, really, to come to Limerick. He's come up from Derry, from Dungiven in County Derry. But the sporting Limerick crowd, they say this one of the most sporting crowds and knowledgeable sports crowds of all peoples in Ireland. Uh, and Limerick and they, although most of them will have come to see Andy Lee naturally, but they still appreciate the man with the skill. They used to say in boxing, the art really is to hit and not be hit. And my good, if you talk about art, you could hang McCluskey on the wall. Look at that. Watch it, just watching it. Then watch the little head movement. Every, no, see that? Two hands went out because his face wasn't there. It's amazing, Dave. Yeah, as I said, he's got cat like reflexes. And when a guy throws a real good hard punch, he has this ability which very few fighters can possess. There's only one more, one other fighter on my mind, and that was Muhammad Ali. As I had pointed out earlier on during this fight, he has that technique where he can move with the punch. And if you throw a haymaker at him and it lands, his head's already moving, so therefore it takes the sting right out of the punch and makes a very hard punch very easy. It's some praise for a man to be mentioned in the same breath as Muhammad Ali. Well, that's what he, he's not, I'm not saying Dave Boy compared him with Muhammad Ali as a winner, but he's compared him with his style and that movement, that ability to read, to see in advance, know what's happening, and now he's going to finish in style. Paul McCluskey from Dungiven County Derry. He doesn't need to finish it prematurely, there's just over a minute to go. Take it on points, that'll do. I suppose it looks better on a pro's record if it's inside the distance. But anyone can see a tape, anyone can see a DVD, and then maybe if you have the money you can go along and see the fights. But this man is top-notch, there's Stop no that. doubt about that. Okay. Now, okay, who has he it. fought? Okay. He's fought the likes of Tonchev. He's fought some very good ones. Tonchev was a world champion, a European champion. This man has been in with world champions, two, three of them. Has been robbed in one of the fights, won a couple of others. And believe me, he may be Manuel, but he's no 40 towers fall guy from Mexico. In there to fight, in there to make McCluskey fight, and there's 40 seconds between Dungiven and Destiny now, as Paul McCluskey has given an exhibition, absolutely, of boxing skills, avoiding punches, landing punches, scoring punches, jabbing, hooking, really terrific performance. As good as you'll see, that's for sure. And now, somewhere down the line, there's a European title. David Irving steps between them, separates them. Seconds are ticking away. And the crowd enjoying it. They have to be enjoying it. like a premature end. But Matroska would be wise not to just ignore them. Go for the next few seconds. And then he'll hear the ring of the bell. And without a shadow of doubt, as sure as Limerick's a monster, Paul Matroski has won. And in my opinion, has won every single round. An absolutely brilliant, almost impeccable performance. Would you agree, Dave? Abs it was textbook stuff the whole way through. We were saying at the start of the fight, he's going to have to be very careful because this, this uh, man is, is a world-class fighter. He's been with the best, he's beaten the best, so therefore he's a very dangerous opponent. But Paul McCluskey tonight made a world-class fighter look like a very ordinary fighter, and you have to take your hat off. He did a demolition job here tonight. It was absolutely first class. You couldn't ask for any more. He did exactly what it says on the box or the tin. He went in, he conquered, and he came out. And in my opinion, he has won every round of this fight, which is very, very unusual to say or to, uh, to you know, and scores being, being totted up. To win every round when you're fighting a world-class fighter is nearly unheard of. So, we're probably expecting 60-54, something like that. But there can't be much doubt about it. We'll hear him speaking very, very shortly. But first, we've got to get the official result. And here is Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee, Mr. David Irvin, has scored the contest at 93 points to 98 points in favour of the winner, Paul McCluskey.
Yes, what a win. What a win for Vendrovsky. Next step, a headliner. After that, Europe here we come, and after that, well, let's not be greedy. He's a class act, that's for sure. Marty Morrissey's in the ring, not to challenge McCluskey. <laughs> And that is for sure, Jimmy. Paul McCluskey, congratulations. Uh, a fine performance. Tough battle, though. Stephen. Well, coming come into this fight, I knew it was going to be a tough battle. I'd, uh, I'd seen this, a few of his fights, and uh, when you look at his record, he's beaten two former world champions. So there was no way it was going to be easy. Uh, I thought I boxed with him myself, but I'd done enough. I knew I knew was outscoring him in the rounds, but he's a tough cookie. Mm. The Mexican came with quite a reputation. But from your perspective, where do you go now? Uh, wherever this man here puts me, uh, hopefully, hopefully near home next time, you know, probably maybe I'd love to fight me in my hometown, even though if they build a hall, probably big enough to get people in there, but it's, uh, I'd love to fight near and given, hopefully soon. Well, let me put that question to Brian Peters. Where, what next for Paul McCluskey? Well, it was great to showcase Paul here tonight in the beautiful city of Limerick, but hopefully... Uh... Sporting Limerick, but up to uh, Letter Kenny would be next on the agenda for Paul. And like you've seen tonight, he's great potential, and he hurt his hand there earlier on. But I think there's a lot, lot more to see from Paul McCluskey. Well, well done, uh, Paul McCluskey, and indeed Brian Peters, ladies and gentlemen. Back to Dara for the moment. Okay, Marty, thank you very much indeed. Well, the crowd here in Limerick enjoyed that, and we did as well. A very impressive performance from Paul McCluskey. And uh, Mick, what, what other way can you describe it? Hugely impressive. A step up from McCluskey. Dara, there's no doubt about it, a really impressive win for him, all right, you know, a deserving winner, won it very, very clearly, but you don't have to be an expert, you know, to see why he won it and how he won it. He's got those, the boys kept talking about it, he's got those huge, fast reflexes, but he's never any more than two or three feet away from his opponent. He's always pressuring and he's always drawing and he's always countering, and those reflexes are so, so quick, and he's a fantastic man at... Uh, just drawing the opponent on and anticipating when the punch comes and that's the, that's the key to it. His distance is very, very good. He's never far away, just that little lean back, comes back in with the punches, the counter punches. He's so quick, he does so much wrong, but he does so much right that uh, he's still on, a, on the, the winning trail. Jim, I know you were impressed with his performance this evening. We're going to have a look at him now and talk us through. This is round three and round five, some highlights from it. Yep, yeah, you can see him, he's, he's throwing punches from every angle and um, as his opponent keeps throwing punches at him, he's making the opponent miss and then he's punishing him. Um, like I said, he just, he nips his head out of, the, out of the way by just, you know, by just a fraction. Here you have him again there, he's, he's tr again, he's, he's throwing these punches from, from angles that you wouldn't think that you could throw punches from and he's just picking them off and he's, he's taking them apart round, round by round. That's a lovely, lovely ride up, up, up the middle there. And, I mean, he has punches coming from... His punches coming from places that you wouldn't think a fella could... You, there's a fella in front of you and you think you're safe, and yeah. out of nowhere he <laughs> chose this punch that he shouldn't be hitting you with, and he's nailing you with it, you yeah. know? And as Jimmy made the point, he had an mark on him at the end. But, uh, Mick, we're going to look now at round seven, and I know sitting here watching this with you, you were... Both of you were incredibly impressed with the way he fought in round seven. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he, you know, he's just non-stop. He's, he's always in your face. He's always pressuring, stalking you all around the ring. I've, I said to Paul before this, you know, Paul, I said, if I was fighting in your day, I would not want to box you because he is a nightmare to fight. Never too far away. It's non-stop aggression all the time. Yes, he does a lot of things wrong. He swings, he swipes, but he's so quick, and those jabs are popping in. He is almost impossible to hit. I said about Paul McCluskey before, Dara, you know, when he does lose, it'll probably be by knockout when he gets caught in some sort of a big haymaker. But uh, it's going to take a good one to catch him because he is so quick, and as I said, he reads the fight so well, he anticipates his opponent so well, he gets that right foot right close in under, boxes off the back leg, leans back beautiful, and gets in the lovely clean shots. Okay, a very imp impressive performance from Paul McCluskey. A good start to the evening from an Irish point of view with uh, a Dungiven man uh, winning here this evening in Limerick. Next, it's Limerick's own Andy Lee fighting against Faliga. This will be a big, big test. We hope that he'll win. They're talking about him as a future world champion. You'll see why in just a few minutes. Andy Lee's opponent tonight, a very confident Argentinian man, Faliga, there he is warming up. A great night indeed here in Limerick for the Lee family, his mam and his grandmother, very, very proud there at ringside here at the University of Limerick this evening. 
Now let's hear from the man himself. Of course, he's only 23 years of age and we're talking about him as a future world champion. Earlier in the week, Michael Lester caught up with Andy Lee and spoke to him about the doors that are now beginning to open and his quest for that world title. Andy, obviously, this is a big occasion and one I'm sure you're looking forward to. Yeah, I am. Um, it's really hard to say, you know, right now. I can't really enjoy it too much. I have to uh, stay focused on the, this fight, but, you know, it's going to be a great occasion for me and the family and, and uh, for everybody and Limerick sports fans and boxing fans and all the people who have supported me, you know, they can come along now and watch me fight in the flesh. You have, of course, through your career, been building up to an occasion like this in Limerick for quite some time. I haven't really fought too much in Limerick, even as an amateur, you know, because a, a lot of times I was fighting internationally or in Dublin for the national title. And uh, so I haven't really fought that much. I've seen me here. The last time I fought here was right directly after the Olympics. I had a fight here. And, uh, you know, it's been a long, long it's, only, it's not long in years, but it's been a long journey in my career since then. And it's nice to come back now and show the people what I've been doing a while I'm away, picking up experience and a different style of boxing. And, and you know, they can re, re get in touch with me again. You've got all the supporters, all the backup, all the people cheering for you. At the end of it all, you're the only guy left in the ring with your opponent and the referee. How difficult is that then? Yeah, that's it. You know, you can have as many people around you, building your confidence, talking you up. Um, but when the bell rings, there's only two men ready to fight and a referee between you, you know? So, uh, you know, the ring can be a lonely place sometimes. But the crowd do help, you know, when you're in there and you're in the, you're in the trenches and you hear those people shouting your name saying, come on, it gives you that little bit extra. And, you know, all those little percentages add up in the end. So it's going to be a great benefit to me to have the support. Your opponent in this fight, Alejandro Feliga, what do you know about him? Well, what I saw of him on tape, um, he seems very, he's very capable, you know, he's a tough guy, he's hungry, he's a young boxer, so he's going to be coming to win. It's a big chance for him to upset me. He stands up tall and he uses his boxing behind a good straight jab, but he's very dangerous with his right hand. He kind of loops, throws his right hand over the top. And, uh, you know, if I'm not careful, like, he can c catch me with it. So I'm going to have to be very, uh, I'm going to have to be on my guard, you know. People always think it's a, f like, in these fights, any anyway, it's a foregone conclusion, you know. Um, you know, everyone's going to be turned up and having a good time. It's like everybody around, no, everyone else can relax and enjoy themselves. You know, they're all in the hotels, they turn up at the weigh-ins, and everyone, the family, everyone's enjoying and relaxing. And every opponent is tough. It's professional boxing, you know. They're training just as hard as I am, and they want it just as much as me. And so... But like, you go in there, you have to impose your will on the guy and let him know that you're, gonna, you're the winner, I'm the winner, and that, uh, that's what I plan to do. Well, Andy, presuming that you win this fight, what's the plan going forward then? Um, for me, I will go back immediately to America. I'm not going to have much time off. I'm going to go back to America and uh, get back into the gym and start training. I have a fight in March lined up on the 21st. Uh, which will be nationally broadcast in America on ESPN, so that'll be a big you know, a big stage for me to box on in, in front of the American crowd. A lot of people in America have heard about me, five fans are excited, but no one's really seen me yet, so this is a, a, a big opportunity for me. Now that you've started to touch the big time, prospects of fights in the States and so on, do you think in your own heart, Andy, that you've got what it takes? There are a lot of good boxers in the middleweight division right now. It's one of the hottest divisions in boxing, um, but I can see myself being among the best eventually if I keep working and going the way I'm going. OK, well, we could have done with this man in Croke Park today. Paul O'Connell is here at the uh, Sports Arena at the University of Limerick to watch Andy Lee with us and with you at home. It's going to be a fantastic fight. And uh, let's just have a, a quick chat with Mick and Jim about what you want to see tonight from Andy Lee. Mick. Well, obviously, we want to see a good performance from him, but I, I hope, I sincerely hope now there's good opposition for him. And, you know, a, a look down through the record would suggest that, yes, it's going to be a hard one for him. But, yeah, Andy's going to have to deliver here tonight in front of his own folk. Uh, it's, it's a real good learning process for him. And as he said there, he's got a fight coming up in March in, in the States. But I would like to see a really good, solid performance from him and probably a stoppage maybe somewhere around five or six rounds. Jim, what do you want to see from Andy, apart from the victory? Well, obviously, we want to see the victory. Uh, we want to see them boxing skills that he, he showcased up in Dublin there in December. He looked absolutely amazing that night, and he totally won, won me over for one. Um, this fella has never been stopped. So if Andy Lee can go out there and stop this fella, he's done something that 19 other people 
haven't been able to yeah. do it. And Feliga at the weigh-in yesterday, a, a very confident young man. He, he thinks he's going to come here tonight and upset the party. Well, I suppose, you, you know, Feliga's got to come with that sort of attitude. And uh, Andy said that he's got a good jab and he's got a good right hand. And, of course, Andy being a southpaw, he's got to be very careful of the right hand. I mean, to say up against the southpaw, it's the right hand is the dangerous punch. Now, Andy has said that that's the case here. But... Um, the thing about Andy Lee is you can move away from Andy's left, but he's got a very good right. He's got two very, very good hands with great power in both. And we saw him when he boxed Carl Daniels, former world champion in the States, going back last May. And he scored one of the biggest and greatest knockouts of the year. Some people would say of the decade. It was a fantastic shot. So Andy can deliver with either hand, left or right. He's got this magic way again of getting the distance right between himself and his opponent. Where once again, as a southpaw, a little bit like Paul McCluskey, perhaps a little bit more controlled than Paul. He leans back and he gets in those long shots, very long and very, very powerful, but also very, very precise punches. Just looking at his interview there, uh, Jim, he, he's, and you'll see when he comes out in the ring, when he's fighting, he's a very relaxed guy. Like He's 23 years of age. He's only a young man. Yeah, he, he looks very, very relaxed, but in the interview there, he looks like a li little schoolboy, really. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't even think he's 23 years of age, but, I mean, he's living the dream over there in America. He's, he's living in Emmanuel Stewart's house. He's living and breathing boxing. It's boxing from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed at night. So, like, it's bringing him on immensely. He's training over there with the likes of the Klitschko's world heavyweight champions. He's in the ring. He's shared in the ring with them. So, I mean, like, it, psychologically, that is doing him the world of good. And when he gets in here against middleweights, I mean, like, if he's saying to himself, listen, I'm able to, I'm able to hold my own with heavyweights. I'm a Spartan world heavyweight champions. Well, then, these fellas pose no threat to him. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and Mick, that that steward factor. This guy's a Hall of Fame trainer. He's trained, what, 30 world champions. He says in the next nine months, Andy Lee will be going for a world title. But, you know, th those points that Jim makes about him living in his house, becoming a student of boxing, like, Stuart rates him so, so highly. And he's, he's hugely important to Lee's development, isn't he? Well, indeed he is, and, uh, you know, he, he certainly has the best man looking after him. But, again, Emmanuel is good at talking up all his own fighters. Yeah, but he, you know, and, and that's no harm, you know, because he gives Andy the confidence, too, that Emmanuel Stewart believes in me. And, uh, you know, if you have a look at Andy and you see the size of him, uh, it, it, he's what, six foot six two? Six foot two, yeah. Six foot two, but he wears a short shorts, where the, the, the trend, of course, nowadays is a long short. So in these short shorts, he even looks taller than six two. He's got those big long legs, and he's got a great stretch in the, in the, in the width that he has between the legs. Mm. So that enables him to do this fantastic lean back and score his, his nice counters. OK, well, we'll look out for that, guys. Thanks for the moment. Uh, let's go down now to ringside and join Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, Dara. Yes, indeed, uh, great atmosphere building up here at ringside as we await the arrival of Andy Lee. Joining me is a man who has seen Andy Lee uh, professionally fight in America, one of the great boxing writers from the box, uh, Boston Herald. This is uh, George Kimball. George, talk to me about what you think of Andy Lee and what you've seen in America. Well, I, he's obviously, he's started a very different path than, say, a John Duddy has, but I, I think... Uh, you know, what he's been doing with Emmanuel Stewart has been a great learning experience. I think he's built a solid foundation and he's ready to move to the next level. I think um, in the States, he's already got a great reputation among boxing people. It's, um, the public might not know him as well, but he's going to fight his first nationally televised main event next month. So that's, that'll make a lot of difference too. Emmanuel has been building him up and in several interviews here with, indeed with me and others, he said, this guy has it. From your perspective, does he have it? Well, yeah, because Emmanuel has seen some of the same things I have, which is and he's sparring with Jermaine Taylor, who was the world champion at the time, and he, he more than held his own with him, and, you know, and has for, for the better part of a year. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think he, you know, he's ready to move to that level. Is this part of the learning curve, to fight in his home city? I mean, there's 2,800 packed into this arena here at UL. Well, you got, you got, to, you got to fight under pressure, and I think this is sort of self-imposed pressure. I mean, he's, he's certainly under an obligation to do well, and, and uh, I think he's going to be very disappointed if he doesn't, if it isn't very impressive tonight. Well, what about uh, Feliga from Argentina? What, what do you know of him? You know, I don't know a lot about him other than, uh, than his record. I haven't seen the tapes of his fights. Uh, he looks he looks like a smaller version of Ev Alfredo Evangelis, at least uh, the guy who, who fought Ali in the 70s. Uh, but uh, he's a tall guy. He's big like Andy. And it'll be an interesting fight, I think. Well, George Kimball, thank you very much for joining us here on RT Sport. As we await the arrival of Andy Lee into the ring, it's going to be a great fight. But in the meantime, it's back to you, Dara. OK, Marty and George, thank you very much indeed. Well, uh, as George was saying in that chat, Andy Lee's reputation is growing 
all the time. Limerick welcome homes, welcomes home Andy Lee after the break. We've just time for a quick reminder of what's coming up here on RTE Sport. Straight after the boxing here on RTE 2, we've got extended highlights of Ireland's Six Nation opener against Italy in Croke Park. Tomorrow, another big treat for Six Nations fans as Scotland take on France in Murrayfield. Live coverage beginning on RTE 2 at half past two tomorrow afternoon. Sunday Sport returns tomorrow evening with a comprehensive roundup of the first weekend of action in the National Football League. And straight after that, it's uh, soccer's big night as we'll be live with the Aircom FAI International Soccer Awards. That's at 8 o'clock on RT2 from City West. And we could have a new Irish manager announced during that programme. You never know. But tonight, all about Andy Lee fighting against the Argentinian, a tough Argentinian, uh, Faliga. Uh, Mick Dowling and Jim Rocker here with me. And boys, we're going to have a look at Andy Lee fighting. The last time we saw him on RT television, this was against Jason McKay. And he made a very good start in this fight, Mick. We're going to look at highlights from round one and two. Yeah, I mean, this was a big test for Andy. Jason McKay came in here with a good record. He was uh, 18 contests, lost only one. So it was a big, big test for Andy. And uh, Andy had to deliver here at the National Stadium. But uh, he was always too smart for Jason, you know? Too cute with that long, there you are. Tr throws the left hand, comes back with the right. So again, you avoid Andy's left, but he's still got a big punch in that right hand of his. So Emmett Tita giving a little bit of respite there to Jason McKay, but I'm afraid it didn't last too long. And Jim, the fight was stopped in, in round six, and we're going to look at that here now against Jason McKay. Yeah, I think the, the biggest mistake Jason made in this fight, if you look at their feet, Jason's left foot all the time is on the inside of um, is on the inside of Lee's right foot. Now, he should be on the outside of that all the time, just what it always do with a southpaw, as Mick will tell you. But Lee just took him apart and he just showed that he's he really is I won't say he's world class at the moment but he's certainly on his way to being world class and as you mentioned like McKay fought here this evening he's a very durable opponent and at times Andy Lee made him look very ordinary yeah like I tipped McKay to beat Lee I remember you know, <laughs> you still, you know, me, still on me by I the way Joe know, like 20 quid <laughs> euros are there like but how and ever um, I genuinely thought that McKay now, because I trained with McKay and I sure. know what he's like, and of course, we hadn't seen Andy Lee over here. All we did was we read about him in the papers and that sort of thing, but we hadn't actually seen him. So, like, I was very, very impressed and, like, I was totally won over by, uh, by Andy Lee's performance that night because he really done a number on Jason McKay. And, like, I've no doubt, like, when I say that, like, at the moment, I think Andy Lee is the best middleweight in this country. And that includes John Duddy. Including John Duddy. Yeah, well, you know, we've talked about this before, and, uh, you know, with Matthew Maxon thrown in there as well, three, three really s superb middleweights. And you would have to say that if Andy Lee took on John Duddy tonight, and if he took on Matthew Macklin, and I know Matthew would love to take on Andy Lee or John Duddy, but you would have to fancy Andy Lee for the simple reason, Dara, because, again, of this cute, clever southpaw style. And he has done it all through the amateurs, and he has learned his trade very, very well, of course, in the States now with Emmanuel Stewart. But because of this huge height that he has of six foot two, this wide stance, this great ability to read the fight so well, to lean back from punches and get his scores in, you would have to fancy him to beat John Duddy. Now, the Duddy camp wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like to hear that. But that is simple fact. He, he just has too many guns for both of the other two good middleweights we have at the moment. But uh, even that was mentioned in one of the papers today about a possible, you know, for a, a, an all Irish world title fight, uh, Andy <laughs> Lee against John Duddy. And Duddy, uh, 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 Duddy, I think, is due to fight Kelly Pavlik, I think, in June um, in Madison Square Garden in New York. All these plans and stuff like that, we're not sure about them uh, going forward. But, you know, that's a fight everybody would love to see. But I think we talked about it the last night we were on. We may never get to see it. No, well, it's not that we'll never get to see it. Even if the fight does come off, there's no way it's going to happen in Ireland. Okay. Okay. Because a fight like that and the sort of purses that the fighters would have to get for that, it obviously has to go to America 
for American TV and for American because they'd be putting up the money. Yeah, we can go to the states. So we'd have a yeah, but then all the Irish, <laughs> all the Irish licensed pairs will have to pay a couple of grand a year instead of that couple of hundred yeah, to I get a fight like see that. This we, we won't go down that road. <laughs> yeah. German Taylor is going to fight Pavlik again. It's not for a title. There's no title mm. on the line. Let's assume German German Taylor beats Pavlik. They will then set up a big rematch for the title. Pavlik v Jermaine Taylor, and then the winner to box perhaps John Duddy or Andy Lee. Well, and I can tell you, Andy Lee would give any of them a, a heck of a absolutely. run for it. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, have a look at the, the tail of the tape. And uh, one of the big things when you look at this tail of the tape uh, about this fight tonight, you look at six foot two, which is uh, Andy Lee's height. And uh, that is a, a very impressive statistic, and it is a, a considerable advantage that he has over Alejandro Feliga from Argentina. Andy Lee, as we mentioned, still only 23 years of age. And down at the bottom there, the southpaw stance. How will Feliga uh, cope with that? It's that awkward uh, stance that Feliga will have to alter things that he does, as Mick and Jim have been saying, um, to, to cope with that this evening. So there you go. You can hear the atmosphere behind us building very, very nicely. A sellout crowd. The tickets uh, for this bout were sold. I think within a matter of minutes when they went on sale a few weeks ago. We've been looking forward to this for a long, long time. Here we go. Andy Lee back in Limerick. We join our commentary team of Dave Boy McCauley and Jimmy McGee. Thank you, Dara. I'm just thinking about Andy to achieve the, an Olympic place, to go into the famous Crunk Gym in Detroit, to make a professional debut in the famous Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. But all of them, I'm sure, will pale in comparison to come home to his native Limerick. The place is packed. It was sold out in half an hour. And Andy Lee is home. Home to an admiring audience who just want him to do well. A fantastic fighter, Andy is. He has a knockout that would knock down the building here at Limerick University or the University of Limerick. Now, 14 wins, 11 of them inside the distance, Dave Boy, and he's never been voted against by any judge anywhere. No, he's one of the hottest prospects in the country. As I said earlier on, you have John Duddy, you have Andy Lee, you have Matthew Macklin and Bernard Dunn. You have, like, there's, there's an array of talent from Ireland, but this young man, Andy Lee, is something a, a bit special, and I think... There's, there, there's, a, there's a real good chance he could be a future world champion. Maybe not next year, but there's a real good chance he can be a world champion and take the title home. Dave, I'm going to do what everybody else in the arena is doing. I'm going to stand up and welcome Andy Lee. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is a marvellous arena here at UL and it's packed to its bulging capacity to welcome back Andrew Lee. And the early days with the Irish amateur team and Irish amateur boxing, we just called him Andrew. Then in the way of life we became familiar with him and called him Andy. Leading him in there is Manny Stewart in the white top. Manny, a man who's trained so many like Thomas Hitman, Hearns, Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, the Klitschko brothers, Oscar De La Hoya too at one time. So he knows what he's talking about. He's seen them and he's leading Andy Lee into the ring. What a welcome for Andy Lee. If you could bottle this, you wouldn't need wind charges. You'd have energy to run the country. Andy has arrived. It's a fantastic moment for the young fellow. And young fellow is 23 and looking younger. But a nerve-wracking time for him too. He's in the ring and so is Mike Goodall. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Live and exclusive on RTE Sport from a packed university sports arena in the beautiful city of Limerick. Where tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Labrook.com's Fight Night, promoted by Brian Peters Promotion, present the main event of tonight's programme, an international middleweight contest scheduled for ten three-minute rounds between and introducing the boxers. And firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, he hails from Buenos Aires in Argentina. He weighed in at 11 stone, five and a quarter pound, and he holds a 19 fight professional record. 14 wins, four wins by way of knockout, with three losses and two draws. Please give a welcome to Argentina's Alejandro Gustavo Faligia. And across the ring in the red corner, wearing the red trunks, rimmed with gold and blue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he wins in a little solid five and a half pound, undefeated the professional. 14 wins through 14 contests, 11 wins by way of the big KO. Three times Irish amateur middleweight champion and the current super middleweight champion of all Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, Limerick's very own son. Andy Lee! <laughs> Our officials this evening appointed by the Boxing Union of Ireland. Uh, the supervisor in charge, Francis McCulloch. The uh, timekeeper, Mr. Alex McKenzie. And the referee is Mr. Emil Tiddy. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please all be upstanding for the national anthems of both countries? Thank you. And first of all, please respect the national anthem of Argentina. Gentlemen, to sing the Irish national anthem, Mr. Des Willoughby. <laughs> instructions to both boxers.
at all times. Most of all, keep it clean. Touch him up. Let's go to work. Let's go Ladies to work. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ladbrokes.com fight time! An electric atmosphere in the University Arena. New Alan Limerick. Oh. It's packed. And away they go, the South Pauli. One of the most powerful young hitters in the world. And in it. We remember back to when he won his silver medal at the World Juniors. He just knocked everybody in sight until he got to the final. But this Argentina is a tough boy, believe you me. This is the 20th fight. He's at 17 of them in Argentina. But he's never been stopped, never been stopped. And it's against that, as I said earlier on, Lee has never been voted against. Three went the distance, and they were all unanimous. So, something got to give, you can say. Interesting about Andy Lee is that his re lead right hand, the southpaw jab, is probably as hard as the one you might expect, his left hand. Now, normally, when you're a southpaw, it means that you're a kittle and uh, as regards hitting. But I would rather venture to say that Lee can hit equally hard with either hand. So far, we haven't seen the left, but we've seen the right go out. Interesting that tonight, too, the two top performers here, Paul Matuski and now Andy Lee, are southpaws. Faliga comes from Buenos Aires. He's done most of his work as a boxer in that city. Beautiful city that it is. Lee just beats him with a punch there. Lee is almost a three-inch advantage in weight and one presumes maybe an inch advantage in reach. That's beautiful stuff, the one-two there. Good stuff, Lee, yes, he's... Uh... Getting that right, that right hand out right away. The half day, uh, Felicia, he actually asked for this fight to take place in December, and he read about Andy Lee, he knew he was a good fighter, and he thought of himself, I can beat this guy, I want to fight this guy. So he got his manager, he took the wheels in motion so he could fight Andy Lee. So you have to give this young man credit because he's fighting a good fighter, he, he's not one of these fighters who wants to take a, a, you know, an easy option. So he's a tough guy, like Jimmy, he's, he's just not a. Uh, here's the money, he's here to try and uh, upset the avatar here, there's no doubt about that. He fought the impressive Luciano Coelho in Buenos Aires just before Christmas and he had him on the, on the canvas too, on two occasions, although he himself went down once, but he's never has been stopped, but Lee is in the pivotal position in this first round in, in that he's in the centre of the ring and he's poking out his right hand for a small oh, oh, good stuff there from Andy Lee. That's Lee there, that's a beautiful one too, the right lead, the left Push. cross. Step back, step, step back. back, says Emil Tate, and that's the day. As he's saying step back, he's talking right into the face of the Argentine boy who goes down low and lifts Lee up. A bit like the rugby match where the front row get tangled up. And there's the bell to end the first round and Lee has shown us enough to suggest but it's going to be a happy night in Limerick, Dave. It's going to be a tough fight, because this young man is swinging his right hand, and you see Felicia here, he fires that right hand across, he just caught Andy Lee with the wrist there, but he's very dangerous with this overhand right. That one there, it just missed the target, but if it lands, it'll do a bit of damage, so Lee's going to have to be very careful here, because this man is determined to upset the apple cart here, he's here to win, he's not just here for the money, so Lee's going to have to be in tip-top condition, this young man is very dangerous. Andy Lee has been Irish light middleweight champion amateur 2003. Then he moved up to middle and became the champion there, 204, 205. Went to the Olympics in Athens in 2004. And uh, then made his pro debut in 2006 in the Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit, Michigan. It's been a glory trail so far for Andy Lee. The wide, wide stance. Tall man, 6'2", it says officially. I think he might even be a little bit more. And the chat is Andy Lee, Andy Lee to a familiar hour. And he's not supposed to do that. Oh, and the Argentines go down. Lee, the allegation is that Lee hit him on the back of the neck and so put him down. And Lee knows himself he shouldn't be hitting him on the back of the neck. Now, what will the referee yeah. do here? Yeah, he's got to be sure that the Argentine is not faking it. And, and, and 
Cardi apologises. He just turned as he hit him. He should not. It was tantamount to a dive in football. We've seen a lot of those in our time. But now that gets the crowd going. Will they get the two fighters going? I just think Philly just felt the power of Andy Lee's shots in that opening round. He said he sent himself, look, I want to get out of here, but I want to get out of here in a way where I'm going to, going to win. In fact, the punch that Andy Lee hit him there, the, the, the rabbit punch didn't do a big lot of damage. It wasn't a very powerful punch. So Philly was play acting there, you know, so he knows himself already that there's a real good chance here he can lose tonight. There's a real good chance he can get stopped or not because Lee carries a bit of power in both hands. And the Argentinian has realised that from the opening round. Amazing power in both hands. Look at that right, the right jab. You know, normally that's a, 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 the jab is the lead punch to open the way for the other punches. But with Andy Lee, it's a hammer, the right lead. And then the left, equally so. So he has two powerful hands. He's fought six times as a pro in 2006, eight times last year. And this, of course, is his first this year. He's been all around the place, Andy Lee. And that's a oh, that's good stuff Lee again. Lee great stuff from Lee who beat him with the punch. But Andy Lee delivers those two punches. They're very, very, very potent. There's some power there, Jimmy, because you can tell by the way the punch lands. Even though it didn't hit the target fully, there's a lot of power there. And Felicia, he understands that fully. You saw the interview with Andy before the thing, where he's talking about, well, one I did with him before, he's talking about the Trump Jim, the famous Trump Jim, you have to fight for your pennies in there, you have to prove yourself, and they reckon that this fella can now be the boss of the gym. He's been in with some great ones, been with Vladimir Klitschko, and Jermaine Taylor, and Kermit Centrum, and they are not for fooling around with Klitschko, used them, and asked him to throw his best stuff, so because he's the same height as his probable next opponent. This is only the second round, half a minute or less. Oh, oh good stuff from Lee! Yeah. Oh, I guess he's a half fighter. He's never been stopped, but my goodness, he's made of iron after that. True. Unbelievable oh, stuff, yes. He was caught with a couple of good solid shots. And I think Freddie Teat or Emil Teat is right to give him a standing cut because he was slightly hurt. I'll tell you one thing, he saw the light there at the end of the tunnel. Kaliga. It was just above us in the ring, and I was hit so hard you could feel our table shuddering. Andy Lee, incredible power in both hands. I don't know what it looks like the TV screens back home to me, but he has got some power on both hands. If you're sitting here ringside, it's unbelievable. Cracking stuff here behind Lee, but that punch, look, that wasn't a, a hard punch at all. And then down uh, Felicia goes. He's play acting here. I, I don't know. He maybe wants uh, the referee to take a point off. But Andy Lee has a has a cracking right hook and a cracking left hand, and the power in them is unbelievable. It's something like you're sitting here at ringside. Could you, do you see the real power that's there on TV? It might not look as devastating as what it looks right here, but I can tell you this: he's a very hard puncher. Oh my goodness! I've seen him in the amateurs. Seen him in the gym. And he hit just above us here, the place shuddered. Andy Lee. Close, 10 seconds. You hear Manny Stewart talking to him there, that's the entourage from Detroit, the famous, famous Trunk Jim. Recently, this fellow Falega has been in with Sebastian Zivic in Germany, a great fighter, is still unbeaten, and he gave him a really, really great fight. He's a tough guy, that's for sure, Falega. The South Pole Lee, the big wide stance, the right hand held out straight, the occasional little shuffle of the shoulders, the stepping around, the adjustment of his foot. He wants Faliga to come and fight. He's in charge, Lee, at this moment, and Faliga knows it. First, he's going to find an opening. He has to give way, he has to dance, he has to keep Lee at the end of that long right jab. But it's not just the jab. The jab can turn out with a stiff little hook. And then there's the left hand that comes crossing over. That's the Lee potency, which makes it very difficult for any opponent. Now, Faliga's a good fighter. He's been in with some good fighters. This is his 20th fight tonight. So he's five fights more experienced than Andy Lee. And he's been in with some really good ones, too. And that's a left hand that staggers him across the ring. Lee, Lee Burton throwing that right to six into his solar plexus. 
And that must have sickened him into the short rib there. And you know, at this moment, all his ribs might be floating when that right hand went in. That two power punches from Lee. One that drove him across one side of the ring, and then a right hand that sunk deep into his belly button. The next punch might be a telling punch here as far as the league is concerned. The Argentine, though, we've seen enough to know that he has won top hombre. He's punch. taken some the stuff and he hasn't... The back. The back. He hasn't cried an inch. I mean, he's taken them all. The reason why he doesn't want to get involved in a brawl here is because he moves every time he gets sent to it, or he stands away. He's getting hurt with those lefts and those rights. You can see the parrot surge and every time Andy Lee cut there in the, in the right eye, there's a slight cut there. There's a little sliver of blood oh, down underneath right his right eye. Right there is actually right hand or left hand. There's some part of the Argentinian knows there's a real good chance if he's caught cleanly here, he's going to be knocked into the middle of next week. Last three quarters of a minute of the round. Lee's dictating it at the end of his lead right hand, a third tall lead. Out it goes again. You see, if nothing else, it keeps Feliga's mind made up for him because he just can't get inside. Lee keeps him outside. Then when they move a little closer, Lee unleashes those big ones. The crowd completely, utterly on Lee's side, as you might imagine. And we're in the last few seconds of the third round, scheduled for 10. Now he has him up against the ropes, but Feliga clever enough to get away from a corner and doesn't want to get tight in there and get the ring cut off on him, which Lee is definitely trying to do at the end of another round. We're talking about was there a little blood on the right hand side of Lee's face uh, that's brushing it off now. There's a little nick over his left eye, but it's nothing to worry about. And when they take the towel away, we look at the right eye. Let's see. I think there might be the merest nick just on the join of his left eye, but nothing serious. Stay by McCarty. He's doing absolutely everything for their soft part. And that's why Felicia doesn't want to get involved here. Every point that Andy Lee throws here, especially those left hands, there's an enormous amount of power there. And Felicia realizes that if he gets caught cleaning with one of these shots, it will put his lights out. And that's why he's running around the ring and he's trying to stay out of trouble. And when he gets in close, he's trying to despoil and hold you know, just to avoid getting points. Corners 10 seconds. But Lee is doing everything very, very, very well. Seconds out. Round four. Andy Lee is a very good fighter now, about to be a great fighter. He can punch. If he ever quits boxing, get a job working as a, a building ball wrecker, a house wrecker, because, my goodness, he can knock down the terrace of houses in the weekend. Marvellous, marvellous punching power. And no way if the Liga wants to get involved with this, as you can see. He's just working your height. The only thing is, he ha the ring hasn't been cut off from his yet. And as soon as Lee is able to cut the ring off from him, get him into a corner and not let him out, then we might have that end way ahead of schedule. The colleague is a good fighter. And he's been in with some very good men. Not many of them would have been able to punch harder than Andy Lee. And down he goes again, and that's putting his head down into the bread basket of Lee. Oh, that's a left hand! Sinking again into his stomach. Step up, step up. That must be hurting him. He's not grimacing, but Lord, unless he's made of leather. I was a left hand when again in right about the belly button. And Lee waiting, left hand cocked, right hand pawing out. Watch the left hand again, just cut him off. And Felicia's not on for anything, for any cutting off. And Lee reaches out his hand, says, Come on and fight. And then smiles when Feliga throws a shot at him. You see, Feliga doesn't want to get involved here at all, Jimmy, because he knows, I know I'm repeating myself, but he knows that he's going to get knocked out or he's going to get stopped or he's going to get hurt if he gets involved here in a brawl. And he's running around the ring here and he's spoiling, he's not making a fight of it at all. And when Lee gets in close to him, he ties Lee up and holds him, you know, doesn't let him go. Like, he's spoiling the whole fight now. Instead of getting involved in the fight and making a, a go of it, because, like, Felicia's not a bad puncher himself, you know, so he should try. 
that instead of trying to spoil all the time, but he realised from the first round that he's a big, big trouble. Yes, he's shipped a few very, very heavy punches, and he knows what Lee has in those two hands. Lee trying to set him up. The vital thing is here, if Lee can get him in a corner and cut off the ring, that would be it. This might be it. No, it's not. The league is still on his toes. And the crowd won't lead a finish up, but he's not quite ready for the finish yet. He hasn't quite got Faliga where he needs him, but it's getting there. He has to keep jabbing out that right hand, keep scoring. The occasional left to the body, almost crucifying the man and making a miss like that. You can see to Andy that he's trying very, very, very hard in here, which means uh, uh, you know, it throws you all out of sorts. What you're better doing is fighting at your normal pace. The team you fight at home puts you under immense pressure. And this is what Andy, Andy uh, Lee's been in tonight. So he's trying now to impress everybody in this arena tonight. And he's trying very hard. And he's trying too hard. Take his yes. time and move in. You make a good point there, boy. The Olympics in Athens. A crowd of Irish supporters were in the arena when he fought in an important contest. And they wanted him. They cheered for him, and he lost his own plot of the way he normally boxes. Pressure, pressure, pressure. He'd know that now if he could listen to me to agree. But here the pressure is on him amazingly. He wants to impress. And you are impressing. You don't need to do much more. Giving him a little too much space. That's when you have to start crowding him a little bit more. And he'll just like he did with Healy. And then he'll start following the That's the voice of Emmanuel Stewart. You give him too much space. Just do as you're doing, Andy. I know someone walk in my sea, you know, he's trying to... This person's walking into some sea, you know? No, but if you saw a crowd and he would have time to do that. Oh, he's getting sick with those punches. If you saw a crowd and might have been right there again, he's not going to be able to do it. But you're giving him too much space. Okay. Second time, round five. The key sentence there, Dave Boy, was you're giving him too much space. I think Manny Stewart wants him to cut down that ring a bit. And Andy may very well hate him. But in this case, Faliga is the rabbit and Lee is the hare. He's doing all the chasing. Lee as the greyhound, he's done all the chasing. See, what he, he's making the classic mistake. He's following him round to the ring, round the ring, instead of cutting the ring off. And that's what he wants. It only takes one or two steps to cut the ring off completely. And that's what he has to do. But instead, he, as you can see, he's walking round along with him, Jimmy, which is the wrong thing to do. You have to cut the ring off so he can't go this way or he can't go that way. Then you nail him in on the ropes or in the corner. But you don't follow them round the ring because that's... These the are the little things that come with experience and Manny Stewart will hammer it into his head, not physically, but talk to him about it now. He's got him in the right place and he makes the right moves. But no doubt Kaliga has come to survive rather than... Rather than throw, what has he thrown of consequence? Lee is nearly throwing all the punches. Now, Faliga, we know, can knock out a person. Oh! And what a dragon left hand! Lights out! Absolute Sandro Faliga! He's never been stopped while he's on the brink of it now, I can tell you. Benil Tidus Khan, he's one ferociously tough man. He really is. Now, Andy Lee, can you do it in style? Yes, he can. Faliga's down again. Oh, he's in shattered he is. He's just above Four. me here. Five. The referee Six. shouting the numbers Seven. at him. Eight. He looks at his corner, Faliga. The corner can't help him now. Lee can pull oh. him asleep. He threw one at Lee. Oh. Lee catches him again, and down he goes. And this time it's over. Oh, B E R spells Andy Lee in Limerick has won the fight in round five. The power punching of Andy Lee has done the business. We thought it would, we know it can, and now before our very eyes, this proud young man has done the business. And for the first time in his pro career, Alessandro Faliga has been stopped. Let's face it, he was crucified by the power punching of Lee. Absolute power. Dave, you've been in many great fights. You've seen many great fights. Who can punch here out of this? Here it is now. A cracking left hand. Just come right out of the blue. Cracking stuff from Anthony. A pinpoint punch. I hit him bang on the chin there. Or just on the eye. And down he went. Absolutely fantastic. The second time he went down now, I didn't think uh, it was a real good punch. But the first one did all the damage. And that was the writing on the wall. From there on in, the fight was over. 
What power and what a prospect. David Boy, he is an unbelievable puncher. Now he's going to meet other guys along the road. He still only has 15 pro fights. Let us count the chickens before the hatch. But I'll tell you one thing. They're brooding now, that's for sure. This fellow can hit, and if he can hit like he can hit, especially when his, when his jab turns into a hoop, he's lethal. He is, he's an absolute, he's a good boxer, he's a good fighter, he's a good puncher. You know, he has a few wee rough edges yet now. He's done the finished article just right now, but it's only a matter of time before this young man becomes world champion. Here, we're about to have the official result from Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of uh, Alejandro Valija's own safety, the referee has stopped the contest after one minute, 49 seconds of the fifth round. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, and now undefeated in 15 contests, lyrics and wants to uh, shake hands with the man. And he only has two hands, but two absolutely lethal hands they are. One man who is in the ring there. Just be careful, Marty. If he jabs the right duck. Marty Morrissey, this is your life. We're about to uh, have an interview here with uh, Andy Lee, but uh, the photographers are doing their thing. But uh, now we have Andy. Congratulations, Andy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Welcome to Limerick, Andy Lee. I know, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the battle first, because uh, Feliga of Argentina, he battled very well, really, in the first four rounds. There. Yeah, I knew, I kind of had an idea how he was going to box, but I didn't. To be honest, he was very negative, you know, I didn't think, but I knew he, he might box like that. I watched him on tape, and he fought a bit more on the tape, but this, I don't know, he, he really was in survival mode, and it's hard to box well when somebody's boxing like that, so I just took my time, and then I got a cut, that put, unsettled me a little bit, then I had to reset, and I took my time, and I knew I'd, I'd catch up with him later on, I just kept walking him down, walking him down, and I knew I'd catch him later on. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a good and tough boxer, because... Uh... Dave Boyd, McCauley and Jimmy McGee and myself were in that corner there and you hit him and it was like the earth moved and we were only outside the ring, thankfully. But you must know you have some power in that fist. Well, a lot of the time when you hurt a fellow and knock him out, it's not a power shot, you know? A lot, a lot has to do with power. Um, it's more of the shot he doesn't see. Like, at the time of first knockdown, I touched him to the body with a jab and then I followed up with a jab and then I jabbed him to the body with a feint. I hit him with a left hand to the chin. And that's what I did. <laughs> so, I was lucky. It was a well thought out battle, but Andy, talk to me as well about coming to Limerick because obviously you've had private conversations with me and coming home here to your own city was very important to you, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's, you know, what can you say? You just heard it yourself. The fans, since the fight was announced, have been fantastic. I've been walking on the streets, people are wishing me well. Everywhere I go, places, you know, that people don't even know me. Look at this now, they're even shouting me. But I gotta thank Brian Peters, first of all. Him and his team, they put it on. Without them, there would be no fight. And he put on the fight. When I talked to him, I said, I want to fight in Limerick. And he made it happen, really, him and his people, Brian Peters Promotions. I thank you very much for letting me do this. You know, this is a fantastic occasion for me, for the city, and thankful to everybody who supported me here today. But Andy, we had many conversations over the years, including in, in Athens at the Olympics, and you dreamt about being a professional boxer and coming back to Limerick. So is the dream fulfilled, or is this only a step on the journey to the ultimate? 
this is the first step of many. Um, hopefully, you know, one day I'll come back here and fight for a world title here in Limerick, you know. Brian wants to do it, Emmanuel wants to do it. Emmanuel's been here now for the last few days. Very impressed with the city. Everyone has given him a good reception. Even my opponent, people in the street have been thanking him, thanking him for the fight, wishing him well, as well as me. So that just shows you what a city it is. You know, it gets a bad reputation, but it's not deserved by any means. Well, it's a very proud city tonight, Andy Lee. Let me move on to Emmanuel. Emmanuel, thank you for joining us here live on RT Television on this great boxing night in Limerick. Yeah, I know you've, in previous interviews, you've said to me, this guy is going to be a world champion, but explain to me what is next for him. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thanks to a couple of good friends of mine, it's Irish Terry Cox from Colony Mayo, and some good friends in Chicago, Perry Mandura and Steve Lipman. But I think that Andy is on his way to the world championship. This fight was difficult because the opponent was trying to run. So it was very hard for him to really perform. But by the end of 2008, he will be the middleweight champion of the world. And we'll have a great time. You've consistently said that. But in terms of the journey ahead, 2007, how do you pan it out from your perspective? Well, right now, there's a fight scheduled for June the 7th between Kelly Pavlik and Irish John Duddy, tentatively. Regardless of whether Kelly loses his next fight to Jermaine Taylor, it won't matter because it's not for the championship. So I am negotiating a deal right now with Bob Arum for the winner of the fight between John Duddy and Kevin Pavick to fight Andy Lee. Mm. Well, t tonight is very important for Andy Lee, and I'm just going to give a little surprise here to his niece because Andy went and collected Bonnie Hickey. So, Bonnie, what do you think of your uncle? He's the best boxer ever. <laughs> that, that, that sums it up. Just one quick word, Brian Peters. You've been, we've been to Belfast, we've been to Dublin. Where, what's next? Well, certainly with the response that we got in Limerick here, I think Andy could fight here every week. But, uh, uh, we're hoping to... Look, what we'd like to do is we'd love to bring boxing out, maybe to Donegal, Galway, Mayo, you know, Cork. Just places that, like, this was the first time ever that there was a professional fight in Limerick. So just more of the same on RTE Sport. Thank you very much, Brian Peters. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Lee. Yeah, a very proud night for Andy Lee and a great night for uh, sport in Limerick. Andy Lee has come home and he's won uh, impressively. We were talking gentlemen. earlier about Paul McCluskey, but... Uh, it was some performance by Lee. Actually, you know, when you look at it, round five was when it finished, Mick Dowling. At round four, the, 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 the break between the two rounds, uh, Jimmy McGee and Dave McCauley were talking about uh, Andy being frustrated. There was the concern about the cut, but all forgotten in round five. Yeah, well, you see, you know, Jimmy did mention uh, that he, uh, this guy was a survivor, and that's what they say in the game for somebody who simply wants to stay in the distance. And I was thinking at the time, the three fights that he had lost were all on points, you know, and I can only imagine that he was a survivor in those that he boxed to just stay in the distance, and he was certainly trying to do that with Andy Lee, but Andy was, wasn't having any of it. Yes, he was trying to cut him off and to pin him and make the ring smaller, because there's an old saying in boxing again, you can run but you can't hide, you know, and, and he, he, he had a big ring to run around and he had a lot of rounds to go to keep it up. And Andy, a lot of people forget the experience that Andy Lee has from his amateur days, Dara, and that stands to him hugely because he's able to, you know, he's able to call on all that experience that he had in the European Championships and in the Olympic Games, his internationals, uh, all of that stands to him. And when it comes to analysing, and, and for us, for Jim and myself here trying to decide who should win this, from my point of view, I look at the amateur records, I look at what he has done, and there was no comparison whatsoever in what both boxes had achieved. Mm. And uh, again, Jim, that, you know, we talk about the learning curve. This is 15 wins out of 15. Hopefully there's many, many more ahead for Andy Lee. But to be up against a guy like that who had never been stopped in his professional career and a guy who basically is running away from him, this is another thing that he, he has uh, dealt with this evening and dealt with it successfully. Yeah, he'd done, he done an absolute number on him there tonight, he did. Um, I think from, from, the first, from the first round we seen when Andy Lee hit him, I think he hit him twice in the back of the head and you know, he was like an Argentine footballer, he dived to the ground. <laughs> and I think, I think that goes to show that from the very first punches that Andy Lee was hitting him, he was hurting him. You know? And um, as we seen then, like, he was just catching him with some cracking shots. I mean, yeah. real hurtful punches. I mean, he doesn't seem to have this big knockout punches, but his punches are so crisp 
they're so fast and as Andy Lee said himself it's not the power of the punch that knocks you down it's the punch you don't see it's 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 the speed of the punch that yeah. knocks you down and yeah. I mean like it was just uh, he's just phenomenal. Like re realist. Really you wouldn't blame Faliga for running away from him. No, I, I wouldn't. And I wouldn't blame any of the others for running away from him either, <laughs> to be honest with you. No, but you know, like, there are, if I may say, last mm. May, Faliga went over to Cologne and he boxed uh, Sebastian Bick uh, in Cologne for the WBO Intercontinental title. Now, he lasted at 12 rounds. But I can well imagine why he lasted it, because he was a survivor in that particular fight too. He would have run for the, the 12 rounds, and he managed to do it successfully. But again, again, somebody with the experience that Andy Lee has now built up, there was just no way I, I, couldn't, I could not see him going the distance. And I think I did say at the start of the, the outset here, yeah. it was going to be five or six rounds at the most. And again, if you had a look at the power of the two of them, uh, the, the Argentinian just didn't have the power. He didn't have the physique. He didn't look to me as though he was ever going to hurt Andy Lee. And secondly, he was never going to get a punch on target. Jim, let's have a look at Andy Lee in action. We've picked out some highlights from rounds two and three here tonight. We can see him here. He's, 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 he's catching that big, long right hand over the top. He's putting in a good combination there, like two and three punch com combinations. Um, his punches are like there's, there's some power in them. And you can see when he's connecting there, you can see the sweat being driven off it, off. Um, off his face, you know, he's just, he's, he's throwing punches from all angles, he's got these big long arms and he really uses them very, very well. But you know, the big long uh, left hand that, that he hit him with, Darrow was a tremendous shot, you know, that big uh, long left hand that he put him down with, it landed perfectly on, right on the button. And once again, he does a bit like Paul McCluskey, he gets that right foot in under his opponent, he leans back, and then he comes back in with the power, you know, and that's where he gets all the power out of. It's the way he just has that wide stance, Jimmy McGee mentioned that again, that wide stance, he leans back, and then comes back in with really good, clean, heavy, hard shots. I was amazed at Andy's um, uh, almost photographic memory, his description of the way the fight ended. He had a punch for punch. He remembered every single second of it. Here it is. Yeah, well, you see, he's so relaxed, you know. He knows, he knows exactly what he's doing. There's that left hand that came in so quick, so fast, that uh, the Argentinian just didn't know what hit him. But, you know, the Argentinian swinging and swiping, you're not going to win a contest like that. I mean, you've... It, there's got to be a bit of that's a lot of hard swings, but nothing landing whatsoever. And I think Andy Lee, for 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 once for a while, showed that a bit of fire in his belly because he really wanted to win that. He wanted to finish that off there and then. Yeah, the fight really was over from the force knockdown. Yeah. You know, he he never recovered from fr from the force knockdown at all. The force knockdown really hurt him. It done the damage, and then Andy didn't really have to hit him with as hard or as clean a shot to put him down them second two times because you know his equilibrium was gone I think that's what they call it when you get nailed and mm -hmm. you just don't know where you are you're, you're fighting on instincts yeah was there a period in the fight for you uh, Mick where you know maybe the occasion got to Andy a little bit now did, did we did we underestimate just how big a night it was for him here to fight in front of his own people in Limerick that was a big night, but if, if you go back to the Olympic Games, a lot of people felt that the occasion got to Andy over there because we felt that uh, four years ago that he should perhaps have, have gone further in the Olympics than he did, and he was a bit too laid back perhaps, and, and uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, in the Olympics, we, as I said, we expect him to go further. It didn't happen. Nobody here tonight, he knew what he had to do. The home crowd were here, lots of celebs around to see him fight as well, and uh, he certainly delivered. And uh, I'm not sure if Emmanuel Stewart is right in saying that he'll be a world champion within nine months, but he'll certainly be fighting for a, a world title probably in this year of 2008. Wouldn't that just be fantastic? Or would it be here in Limerick? You never know. There's a lot of talking and negotiating to do before then, but it, it's a victory tonight for Andy Lee. He's won it in round five. We expected him to win. He did. He's won here in Limerick. We'll have more chat and more boxing for you in just a few minutes. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the uh, University of Limerick. Andy Lee has won here tonight. The fight stopped in the fifth round. We're going to show you uh, some of the other action from earlier on this evening. Kieran Healy in action. This uh, bout a light middleweight contest. He's up against a Latvian opponent, Pavel Lota. It was scheduled for six rounds. We join it in round two with Jimmy and Dave Boy. Round two. On the card here tonight in Limerick, the Andy Lee team is threading its way right through it. Jason McKay, his last opponent in Dublin, uh, whom Lee beat six rounds on the bill, and now Kieran Healy, whom Lee beat back on the 25th of August in Dublin, keeping the Lee story alive here in Limerick. And on the Closed circuit television between fights. They're also showing to the crowd here some of Andy Lee's successes as a pro. So it's a good build up for a big night for the man from Limerick. Who pushed the meantime, Kieran Healy, the man from Belfast, trying to dictate here against the 20 year old from Liga and Latvia. He's throwing at his left hand, but he's out of distance as you can see, and he's not making the connection at all. And the more experienced Healy carries the artillery. Solid short shot from Hulta to the body, but Healy replies himself with a good one too. It's a very close fight, this. Oh, it's a good uppercut from Hulta. It's a good solid close fight, this, Jimmy, and these two guys are given... Uh, each, is, each is given as good as what they're getting yeah, here. it's a good undercard fight, no doubt about that. But fact, it would have to be said, I suppose, about all the Brian Peters promotions, that we haven't seen anybody come and collect his money and take a dive. No, they're here, they're here to give value for money, there's no doubt about that, but these Eastern Europeans, I mean, are tough, tough people. And this young man, he's only had three fights, but he, to me he looks like a seasoned pro already. He's a real tough, wary customer here, but he's having his work cut here, but he's going to have to pile the pressure right on here. He can't give this young man, uh, Luta, one second uh, break. You, just, you have to be on top of him from the word go. Knock him clean out of his stride. And he's coming forward here and he's beginning to dictate the pace and uh, he's beginning to show Healy what he's made of here. So Healy wants to turn around here and knock this guy right out of his stride and pile the pressure on. Easier said than done because Lota is here for the duration by the looks of it. He held his hand up and kind of punched thin air at the end of the first round. As much as to say, look, I lasted a round, I've gone well. He tried to rather optimistic uppercut there that missed by a considerable margin but the very fact that he's throwing it at all or trying to throw it shows that his confidence is beginning to go he tries it again kind of a semi-hook uppercut but he's not he's not for pushing inside this young man and Healy's gonna have to work at him constantly to deny him a break in that zero record of his that's a good right and a good left to the body from Lato and his hands held up high. He was able to withstand whatever Healy threw in reply. Him, he's 20 years of age, he's strong, he's hungry. I know he's lost his last three fights, but he's digging deep here, this young man, and he's you know he's, he's hungry for success here. He's beginning to pile the pressure on, but Kieran's taking the, the pressure well here, and he wants to just try and, and take the play away from Muta. Round three. It's the third round, 13 years in lifetime experience separates these two men. Kieran Healy of Belfast, 33 years old. Would have been expected uh, to win this against a man who hasn't won at all as a pro. Now Healy has a chance here if he can find an opening. But good covering up by Lota. He's covered himself well defensively, he's quick hands too. One thing for sure, Dave Boy, he's not short of confidence. No, there's no doubt about that, Jimmy, but what Healy has to do here, Healy has to keep pushing him back. He can't let uh, somebody get too confident here, because this is what the Luta is doing. He's growing in confidence with every round here, because he's having success. And so is Healy having success, but Luta is a guy who's coming forward and the guy who's, who's uh, doing a wee bit more damage than Healy. Now, the fight's very, very, very close, but in order for Healy to, to, to break away from that, he has to just pile the pressure on him. Just keep on top of this young man. Don't give him an inch, don't give him a centimetre. Just pile the pressure on. But neither of them, and certainly Healy's not able to dictate the fight as such. That left hand was jabbing out again. He's a little wild with his right hand. Probably gaining too much in cut with the time looked up. He's good though. The fellow who's only in the pro game. He must have some chance of getting away with being a little better than just a 
Tate hey, Journeyman. Tries the right cross, well covered up by Healy, takes it in his arm. There's a great sense of youth about Lota. Fears nothing, he's quite well able to jab and move his head too at the appropriate time to avoid that right crushing right hand from Kieran Healy. Got Healy's taking a lot of the punches here now on the gloves. Like Luta has not had the same success with getting the punches through, and Healy's uh, beginning to pile the pressure on now himself. So Luta, I'm not saying he's tearing, but he, he hasn't got the same accuracy in this round as what he had in the previous round. Or else Healy's doing a better covering up job, defence-wise. Luta is, uh, uh, seems to be at his best when he's able to attack and be the aggressor. I'm not so sure that he likes it when Healy's able to hit him with a really hard shot. Because you can see him wince at times and back off. So if Healy can crowd him down like now, he just could begin to inch it away. You see, he's quite prepared to give ground when it looks like it's going to get tough on the inside. That was a trifle low, that left hand, but nothing to worry David Irving. You're 100% right, Jimmy. When, when, when Healy's coming forward, he's a man in charge. When he lets uh, Lutal come forward, Lutal's a man in charge. So Healy has to keep piling the press on. I know this sounds like I'm repeating myself, lose, lose the time. This is what you have to do. I only wish the fighters could hear sometimes what I'm saying. Yes. The new idea, them. Have, been, have them wired up. <laughs> Dave Boy. Switch A. I'm not always right, but sometimes I think I'm right. Press button B and get your money back. Two rounds scheduled to go. Was over six. And a lot of confidence uh, oozing out of Lota in the earlier rounds, but I'm not so sure he's so confident now because he realizes that Healy is not for pushing around. Experienced 33 year old Belfast man is willing to go the long haul here. Watch out here, Pablo. He won by KO in Belfast. Uh, Healy. He lost the one before that, then he won the one before that, and he lost the one before that. So he knows what it is to win and to lose, but he's won twice as many. Well, he's had twice as many as he's won, but his record is quite good. It's about even, Stephen. This is the penultimate round. See that left hand lead there from Lota without Tet or without Tar. He tried to right cross. He's not as confident now. Not because Hiddy's coming forward to me and, and uh, you know, taking the play away. This is what Hiddy I, I keep saying this, but this is what he has to do. It's a terrible that he keeps coming forward and doing out the punches because every time he takes his foot off the gas in Luta, he comes forward and has success. So Healy has to make sure, in order to clinch these rounds that, that are very close, by the way, in my opinion, he has to keep his foot on the gas and always catch the eye of the referee. Referee is the man who's scoring this, David Irving. He'll just check up his uh, notebook at the end of it and uh, tot up the runs as he gave it to them. Watch your head, watch your head, but as Dave Boy says, nothing very much in the runs. I should imagine Healy's uh, certainly shaded three, four, and perhaps this one as well. Second, just about even. First, maybe to the Latvia. Oh, well, those are unofficial, and we have no inside track on the referee scoring. It's a hard slog, that's for sure. Maybe short in the most generous of finesse. These fellas come to fight. Darn the money the hard way. Think of how many sports are harder than this. But no matter how good you are, if you're the Tiger Woods of the game, you're going to get hit. You have to give these two fellas credit, Jimmy, because they're trying their eye strings out of the beast trying very, 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 very hard. And it's a, it's a pretty uh, hard and absorbing fight because they are throwing quite a few shots. I know they're not all landing on target, you know, but they're, they're what you call solid punches, you know? They're not devastating punches, but solid punches. And it's anyone's fight with a round to go. Second chance, sixth and final round. Okay, Kieran, quick one. Two fights. Good lads, keep it going. 
Box on. Sixth and final round. Kieran decides it's time to take the fight to his man, and that's just what he's doing. Let him go, Kieran, let him go. Lota tries to climb up the inside with right hand. Stop boxing! Just a little short there. Okay, watch it, watch out. Kieran Healy. Box on. That's why, that's why. David Irving, a good relationship with the two fighters. Nice to hear him. Nice to talk to him about their Christian names. Take time out, Alex. Compliments. A little time out for the gum shield to be washed, placed. Okay. Okay. All okay. Where we go again? And Healy jumps in immediately. It's up to him now to force the issue. That he's done. That right hand was a good one from Healy. The overhand right was a bit too overhand. Right on the back of the neck of uh, Lota. The good fighter, fighters have been told by their corner men to come out because a lot hinges, I think, in this last round in their eyes because you know the fight's been pretty close. Healy, in my eyes, has sheared up most of the rounds, but still, it all depends what way the referee sees it. I have Healy in front by a couple of rounds, but still, it's still a pretty close fight that it could be going the other way. But he, right he needs to keep turning the pressure on. You just never let on this man like a clegg for the next two <laughs> minutes. That's a great word for the, from my childhood back to Clegg. Clegg. <laughs> and it's stick to you. You never get them off you. Yeah, that's right. And well, that's what uh, Kieran Healy's got to do now. And that was a terrific right hand, the best punch of this final round so far. And I, like a dear boy Macaulay, would have Healy ahead by certainly a couple of rounds, but he cannot skate, cannot take it easy, but he has significantly won so far this final round. And that is impressive too, when you're trying to impress the sole judge who's the referee here. And uh, Lota is beginning to get a little wild, his head under the oxter of Healy. Referee gets him out of that, and Healy is dominating the last round. Now. And unless he walks into a haymaker, you can say the 33-year-old man from Belfast is about to win this one. But Lota's given it, given it a good show, and even if he's going to end up with no wins after four professional fights, he's still going to make a lot of money as a good, solid, honest journeyman. And Healy just beats him to a vital punch there, and that was very important. Seems to be gasping for air, Lota, or otherwise he's in trouble with his gum shield, because his mouth is open quite a lot, and maybe his breathing isn't the best. And it's a dangerous thing to be coming in with your mouth open like that. I remember that accident in Germany late last year from a broken jaw, but however, somebody should tell him about that. Or maybe he is having trouble with the gum shield. There's the bell, the end of the contest. And Lota thinks he did well. I think he did well also. But so did Kieran Healy. Sean Mannion over there in the corner of Healy. And I should imagine that's where the victory will go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, after six rounds of action, the referee has scored the contest. Uh, Pavel Lota, 58 points. Kieran Healy, 56 points. The winner, Pavel Lota. Well, some surprise in the arena here this evening. Mick, were you surprised at that result, Kieran Healy losing? Well, you'd wonder what Kieran Healy was doing since uh, December 8th when he won the Irish light middleweight title when he beat Lee Morta by knockout in the fifth round up in Belfast because tonight uh, wasn't a good performance from him. You know, he's, he is a good sound professional, but uh, tonight he was just uh, totally and absolutely outgunned, outboxed, outfought, and uh, was never going to win it. Jim? Yeah, again, it was, it was a close fight, but Kieran Healy didn't fight at all like the Kieran Healy who was up in Belfast. He was really up for the fight in Belfast, and you wonder, did he put in the training for tonight? Because that fella he fought tonight had only fought three times, yeah. and he hadn't won any of them. So, I mean, like, there's no way on this earth that he should have been beating Kieran Healy tonight. But he did beat him, and he bet him fair and square. So, Healy done something wrong, or he just had a bad night at the office. OK, uh, well, very disappointing for Kieran Healy. Two other bouts, uh, by the way, from Limerick this evening that we want to bring you news of. First of all, Jason McKay fought Andy Lee in December, and uh, McKay was actually the winner on points. And then uh, Michael Perez, he's a Cuban who's actually based in Cork, and uh, this fight stopped in round one after barely a few seconds. Perez, uh, the winner here this evening at the Sports Arena at the University of Limerick. Briefly, Mick, the future now for Andy Lee. What is ahead? 
Well, future certainly is bright for Andy. You know, he's, he's got a great uh, streak uh, going for him now, you know. Uh, hopefully he'll fight sometime around uh, April or May and perhaps in the, as Emmanuel Stewart would be saying, get a title shot sometime maybe uh, late summer. Absolutely, Jim. Again, I think he's, he's a smasher. I think he's one to watch for the future. Um, I'd like to see him fight for world title, but not just here maybe next year, and then hopefully he come back and defend it here in Ireland. OK, that would be fantastic. My thanks to uh, Jim and to Mick for their company here in Limerick this evening. It's been a great night for Limerick. It's been a great night for Andy Lee. And as we've just heard, the words world and champion just keeping mentioned after his name. From Limerick, good night. to